Everything that he does, like when you think of a true cowboy, a true gentleman, that's who Rick is. Rick is Alberta in a way. He personifies that attitude that Alberta has always had. Well, I would describe Rick as being an incredibly kind, generous, and very empathetic man. Some people, you get to know them that much. Rick is the kind of guy who will give you everything that he's got. I mean, he doesn't hold stuff back and you get to know his values and he shares those values with you. And I guess that's one of the things that rubs off on, on people is Rick's values. That to me is what Alberta is about, is you take care of people who need the care. Rick got to know my parents because when you're young and work is, you know, part of who you are, I guess you want to show your parents where you work. And Rick formed this wonderful relationship with my parents. When my dad got really ill and he uh, died of cancer, he was in palliative care. And Rick went to visit him when he would go up to Edmonton. And not only would Rick go to visit him, he would go from the bakery at Heritage Park order up a whole box load of sausage rolls and cheese buns or whatever else the goodies were being made that day, bring them to Edmonton, and he'd bring them to my dad. And I remember this one time, my dad said, you know, Rick, thank you, but my appetite isn't that great. And Rick said, oh, Vern, these aren't for you. These are for the nurses and doctors who are caring for you. Like, you want to look after those guys. Howdy folks, welcome to Longview and the uh, Rick and Erica Smith house. Well, my mom and dad met in Killam, Alberta. They got married and uh, moved out here to a town called Royalties, which is just on top of the hill from Longview. I was born in 1947 and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention I was the youngest of three. My dad was very happy when a boy was born. I had two older sisters. My dad was so happy, he bought my mother a fake fur coat. I, mean, I couldn't buy her a real one, but the, uh, she got her, her fake fur coat, And even though it was August when I was born. Living in Longview as a youngster, I mean, you had a, a big playground. The Highwood River still is, but back then in the 50s, was a remarkable trout fishing stream. Fishermen would stream out here on weekends. And so we went, and, as youngsters, we went and we'd work the creeks and catch minnows. And we'd sell minnows to the fishermen. We always yell out fresh salted minnows. And we sold the packages of minnows for 50 cents each. And that was a lot of money. And we made a lot of money in the summer selling minnows. And you know, what was the fun was catching them too. We had, we'd had to net them and fish and wildlife will probably come looking for me after this. <laughs> I was nine going on 10 when we, we moved from Longview to Calgary, but my, 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 my 10 years in Longview, I think, really shaped the uh, personality I have. My mother was a tremendous volunteer in the community in Calgary when we moved in there, and I continued her volunteer ways, and, and Dad was the worker. You know, those values, I think, were just in everybody's DNA and, and continued to be. And it was, if you grew up in rural Alberta, uh, they were natural and you, you took them to Calgary and, uh, or anywhere else. And, uh, and, and that's, the, that's the way you lived. And that's, those were the values you had. It was kind of ironic that I ended up at Heritage Park for so many years and being part of and, and managing a facility that was bigger than the town I grew up in. You know, Harry Sparks had far more buildings, far more people, uh, far more amenities, and uh, but it was like that was one of the joys of being at the park. There aren't many jobs in Canada that are equivalent to being the general manager of Heritage Park. There's only a couple of other parks. When I started the park, I was a fresh young guy out of university. I worked about a year and a half. Uh, for Hudson's Bay Oil and Gas. 
I started looking in the newspaper, and uh, but I saw this little ad, assistant manager at Heritage Park, and I thought, you know, I, that looks intriguing, and I applied, and I went for a couple of interviews, and the more I went for the interviews, the more I, I liked the thought of, this is something totally different from the oil patch, but something I thought I'd be really interested in, and something I saw myself long term. No, well, as I started as assistant manager, I was really green and really wet behind the ears. But there was a, a cadre of, of staff. It was a lot of very small staff. I think we only had a, you know, nine or ten full-time staff. It wasn't many, but they were really dedicated people who took me as a young person under their wing and prevented me from making mistakes. I realized and, uh, and cherished the fact that I had a pretty, I didn't have a job, I had a position. It was just a, it was a, just a very unique circumstance. And I had all these people who wanted to help and make it work. And they had all this enthusiastic staff and volunteers. You know, it's just a memory of the people and the programs we accomplished. Uh, so I, I, you know, picking out the highlight, I, I just have to say it's just all the people I met. I met all kinds of people from all walks of life. And, and then, of course, all the visitors, the hundreds and hundreds and really millions of visitors that we hosted while I was there. And I met some pretty interesting people. I always liked being around people and with people. Actually, you know, I was, I actually volunteered a lot when I was a youngster, coaching baseball and, and things like that. I, yeah, like, and like I say, I learned that from my parents who were pretty active in the community as well. You know, I think everybody should volunteer somewhere. And uh, there was a, a past president of the Stampede by the name of Ed O'Connor. And Ed had a very uh, prophetic and I thought a very wise saying. He said, you know, volunteering is the, is the rent you pay for the space you occupy in a community. And having worked uh, and been involved in Heritage Park and always benefiting from the work of so many volunteers there, uh, I wanted to, uh, to do my bit as well in the community. I got assimilated into it pretty quickly, and and you, you, I found out very quickly. Just meeting people like that, you found out, you know, it's all bigger than you are. You just have to you do your job and, and 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 go with it, and do your best, and support it, and and things will grow, and good things will happen. And uh, they were just good people. I just, I mean, I, I I just have to smile when I think about these people I met because it was it was it was a great ride. Mostly by accident, I was pretty ill at the time and on a lot of medications. And somehow I got uh, the, the notion that I'm going to start collecting Mexican velvet paintings. Kept me interested in art for quite a few years because I ended up having the largest collection of velvet paintings in North America. We made good use of them at Heritage Park. Uh, we put, th put three uh, events on Mexican events with the, the paintings and Mexican music, uh, live music, and the Mexican community uh, rallied around it, and Mexican food, and we raised $128,000 for Heritage Park Foundation just by putting these velvets on display. So um, we, put, we put them to good use. I always enjoyed the chuck wagons. I put together my own chuck wagon. Now, you tell you, well, how did you do that? Well, I got, a, I got 189 people to uh, donate $1,000 each. It took three years to raise the money, and uh, we bought a wagon. I mean, we also donated $60,000 to charity, but this was all in celebration of the, uh, of the Calgary's uh, Stampede Centennial. And I thought, you know, we got to do this just once, you know, have our own wagon. And we called ourselves the 10 day tarmac babies. Because every night there's 5,000 people standing on the tarmac cheering on the wagons. And many of us stood there for 10 days every year and cheered on our wagon. So we called it the 10 day tarmac babies and we bought our wagon and uh, had some great uh, functions and donated $60,000 to charity. Regardless of any other achievements that I've managed to uh, uh, enjoy, my family by far has been my, my greatest achievement. A mutual friend uh, thought I should meet this young woman named Erica and uh, 
She arranged a blind date for us in April of 1978. Rick came to pick me up and sure enough, you know, he was quite tall and uh, he had this great smile. So I thought, well, so far, so good. And I said, gee, this, she's a, you know, uh, very, you know, you're a very good looking young lady. And uh, we got in the car, uh, you know, this is back in the 70s now. So I had my eight track, I had the best eight track money could buy in there. And I put on a Willie Nelson, uh, Waylon Jennings CD. And, uh, you know, she liked the words to Luke and Bach, Texas. And so did I, and we went down the highway had a great dinner, and it turns out that we had a lot of people that we knew in common, but he and I had never exactly met. And on the way back, I said, you know, I gotta go play hockey in Red Deer tomorrow. And I said, would you like to go? That was an adventure, and I think uh, on the way home, it was, it was a party kind of thing, and on the way home, I just thought, you know what, this guy has some potential. Um, the third day, so that was the th Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday we went out for dinner again, Gee, that's pretty good. We're three for three here, and uh, things progressed pretty pretty quickly. And uh... We were just feeling much more comfortable, and anyway, seven months later, we were married. We've been married just over 35 years now, and uh, we've raised two wonderful children, uh, my daughter Christine uh, and my son Michael, two children that we're both very proud of. Uh, but uh, Erica has certainly been the rock of this family. I've been out doing my thing and, and uh, involved in obviously Heritage Park and many other things. And those accomplishments that I achieved uh, in life were because Erica was, was my true partner in everything we did. She had to often take care of the kids while I was away, but she also had to be my my advisor, my my mentor, my, uh, my confidant, and uh, she, she was never shy to give me advice. And usually it was sound advice. And uh, it is any any success I've enjoyed uh, belongs uh, equally, if not more, to to, my, to Erica, who's just been a, a rock for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> bring back lots of good memories for us, I'll tell you. <laughs>